Hello and welcome to another episode of Top 5 Series and today we'll be discussing Top 5 Games that can be played under 30 minutes So uh, if you actually haven't subscribed to Amateur Board Gamer please do click on the subscribe button below uh, click on the notification bell so that you get our videos as soon as they are out fresh uh, on YouTube So today uh, with me I have three guests and the first it's no stranger because you see him in every episode of Top 5 and that's Jeffrey with his nice <laughs> background game uh, uh, his nice virtual background of uh, his own game so Jeffrey you want to tell us the name of the game yeah uh, okay so this is uh, kind of like a teaser for for my planner the Kickstarter game um, which which I plan to kickstart this year but because of the COVID situation I actually um, decided to postpone uh, next year yeah, so um, for the title, uh, it's still pending. So I'm not going to review the title yet. Yeah, so maybe if you look at the background, you can just drop a pocket and guess what the theme is about. Yeah, so so details-wise, why not just keep it a secret, you know, so that, um, you know, so that uh, to let everyone look forward to. Hmm. All right. right, right. And of course, other than that, we have uh, Matthew with his nice virtual background of his uh, game, Better Man C Majors. So Matthew, yeah. welcome. Hey, hi. <clears throat> so, for your game? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, so, yeah, um, so like previously I mentioned that uh, I'm a designer and I'm also a seven time uh, game jammer. So, uh, this is actually um, a game that I actually created based on one of the game jams. It's called uh, Badomancy Majors. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the, that's the title of the game. It will definitely fit. Uh, it, it will be a gateway game uh, based on what we're also talking about today. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, we have uh, Steve from uh, our friends at Capital Games Studio. And uh, they also have very nicely uh, uh, given us the opportunity to use their Zoom account to record this. So a shout out to them. And Steve, you have hey. a game that's coming out as well, right? Which is also kind of under 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my upcoming game is called Checkout. It's basically a game where players are rolling dice frantically trying to grab uh, products inside a convenience store. Yeah, uh, it's very, it's really uh, fast, chaotic, and it's loads of fun. So uh, watch out for it in the near future, like one yeah, or two months. <laughs> Who check it out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right. So. Without further ado, let us head straight in. Uh, we'll be going in alphabetical order again. So, uh, Jeffrey followed by Matthew, uh, myself, and then Steve. We will be sharing on uh, the, the top five game in our list that can be played in under thirty minutes. So, Jeffrey, over to you. Your number five pick. All right, my number five is a party game where I recommend. Um, uh, new new board gamers to try out. Yeah, as you know, it is also a, a very good gateway game. Okay, maybe uh, maybe I'll start introducing what's the game about. Okay, it's played from five to ten players. So so everyone will be given a uh, an answer on what to draw, except for that one person who has no answer, and and everybody will have to guess. Where did guess okay who among the players is a fake artist that goes to New York? So that is my number five pick. Fake artist goes to New York. All right. So yeah. So so according to BGG, it can be played around twenty minutes. Yeah. So um based on how based on that many times I played, yeah, definitely um you can play this game for less than thirty minutes unless you want to play multiple rounds. You know that that you know yeah. So if you play like too many rounds, of course it can you know go above thirty minutes. But for a but for a one time game, definitely less than that. Yeah. So why do I recommend that? Is because it is uh, fun to mock everybody's artwork. Yeah. Um, of course, it is fun for the fake artists, you know, to start guessing. Uh, you know what what everyone is is you know are drawing, and and it is also you know a good potential for the fake artists to you know. Um, Kind of like, you know, bullshit his or her way, you know, to to be part of this, you know, beautiful artwork. 
or you can draw individual um, individual images. Yeah, and I forgot to mention that uh, for each player's turn, right, when you draw, right, each player will be will be given a chance to draw a stroke. So how do you draw a stroke is really up to the player. But if you lift your hand up, okay, that's the end of you know the player's turn. Yeah. So so this is also one one um one factor that makes the game a lot more interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, it is also quite fun where a player mistakenly, you know, lift up a pen. Oh, that's the end of turn, you know, you know, and this and this this player who makes a mistake, you know, can become, you know, the potential fake artist. You know, are you trying to, you know, act like you 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 forgotten the rules? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it is quite a lot of fun. Uh, it is a nice party game and it is really a good gateway game. Yeah. So so uh yep. A fake artist goes to New York. Uh, designer Jun Sazaki, publisher by Point Games. Yeah, so that's my number five. All mm-hmm. right. We are okay, going okay. for a great start. So first game, twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll move on to uh, Matthew and uh, Matthew, your fifth pick. Yeah, my fifth pick is actually Love Letter. It's a game that uh, definitely most people know. Uh, plays up to four. Um, if you get the expansion, it plays up to eight. But usually, people like it when um, it's up to four players. So what I like about the game is um, it's very tight, right? You only have like two cards in which you use one of them for actions. And when you're trying to use actions, you're trying to put people out. But yeah, at the same time, towards the end of the game, if everybody's alive, then whoever has a higher value would, uh, would win the round, right? So you have to balance between putting people out versus towards the end game, you are trying to have the highest points. Now, of course, the other thing is that usually when you have the higher points, you are more likely to be out from the from the round, right? And basically, every round you're just like collecting uh, points, you know. And after a set number of rounds, whoever is the most wins. Um, what I particularly like about the game is a lot of the mind games as well. You know, you're trying to beat people, and you're trying like just narrow down who's what, you know. Yeah. So that's my number five. All right, so we'll move on then to my fifth pick. So my fifth pick uh, is a nice little game about sushi. And uh, the game that I pick is uh, Sushi Go. Yeah. So personally, I don't own a copy of Sushi Go because I have Sushi Go Party. And technically, I mean, there are, it's, one is like the deluxe version of the other game. But uh, Sushi Go is a, is a card drafting game where you kind of have a set a, a number of cards on your hand, pick one, to pass on and then the card that you actually uh, have drafted will kind of form your table of the sushi that you are consuming and they will score you points and you play that for three rounds and uh, at the end of the three rounds the one with the most points wins to me uh, it is a quintessential card drafting game if you are new to board games it will be an easy way for you to understand uh, the mechanics of card drafting uh, before you progress to a more complicated game Perhaps like Seven Wonders. So to me, uh, Sushi Go was one of the first few games uh, I ever encountered. And uh, I mean, it, the cute design uh, definitely will attract more than your standard uh, board gamers because uh, it's, it's just how people will view the game. Yeah. So that will be my fifth pick, Sushi Go. Great, great pick. No crossover. Okay, so... <laughs> no crossover. Yep. So we will then move on to Steve's uh, number five pick. All right. So my number five pick is uh, about farm animals. So usually you would think that uh, in this style of games, you want to collect a lot of farm animals. There are other in games about farm animals, you want to collect animals. But actually in this game, you don't want any animals. So this game is called Silly Cow or the German name Bladeke. Blodeke, something like that. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. Uh, in this game, you are playing farmers and you are trying to get rid of this, uh, to quote, dumb animals. Okay. And how this game is played is that during your turn, uh, you have a hand of cards. Uh, it's played a little bit like Uno, where you are playing either one card, a player playing one card a turn, or you can also choose to play a pair of cards. Uh, and the type of cards that are inside the game, there's only four types of cards. It's just uh, each card is just a picture of an animal, so uh, it's very straightforward. So uh, depending on what card you play, uh, different effects will happen. Or if you play a pair, you will cause 
the animal to move among the players. So each of these animals has like points on them. And uh, whoever ends the round with these animals will keep them and score the points. So sounds good, but actually you don't want points because at the end of three rounds, you, the player with the most, sorry, the player with the least points is the winner. Mm. Right. So I think uh, it's a really great game, and whoever I played this with or introduced it to, uh, they really enjoyed it, and it was uh, really a surprise for me. Like when I first uh, found out about it, it was introduced to me. I think a couple years ago when I was in Germany by this other game uh, reviewer. So he introduced the game to me. I was like, wow, this game is amazing. I have to buy it. And the next day, I bought it at the game convention still. Yeah. So, amazing game. Uh, City Cow or Blodeker, uh, designed by a German publisher uh, called uh, Three Rabbits in the Sunset. Very interesting publisher name as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, to be honest, I've never heard of this game, but from the way you describe it, it reminds me of Six Name. Just in uh, shooter six. format, but I mean, because of the fact that you don't want to gain points, I guess so. Six yeah, Name, yeah. you don't want to gain full hits. And, the yeah. gameplay, gameplay is a little bit different. Uh. Yeah, the yeah. gameplay sounds a bit different, but yeah. when I hear the description of it, that's the first mm. game that came to <laughs> And you have a cow inside, so. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the the bull. Oh, that's, that's, that's how I <laughs> it's also quite unfamiliar unf- unf- to most of us, I believe, because I only played it once, and uh, and and yeah, and I actually almost forgotten the title until Steve mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> great game, great game. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So now we will move on to number four. Right. right. Back to you. Okay, number four is basically a word game, a one word game where there's where there are two teams, okay, and total of twenty five words. So each team will have to clear their number of words. The first team who who finish it, or the team that digs the minesweeper bomb, okay, loses the game. So the the, the game is called Code Names by by Vladder Shep Till. Yeah, publisher is Shack Games. I believe it's Shack Games. Yeah, I think there might be more publishers, so I'm not very sure which one. Yeah. So right. why would I want to recommend Code Names is because um, um, uh, other than you know, other than trying to guess the, what do you call the person who 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 says out the word storyteller? Like I can't remember. Spy master. Spy master. Yeah. Spy master. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Spy master. Yeah. So other than guessing, you know, um. Uh, what the spy master is trying to, you know, trying to indicate which which um which word like okay yeah so so you are also trying to guess you know you know which which of the words are possibly possibly not belong to the other team yeah so so in a way right it is one of the one of the you know um it's one of the cooperative games where actually you know actually a team should somewhat analyze, you know, your correct answers together. Yeah. So, so this is also one of the one of the so-called cooperative games. I'm not very sure it's considered cooperative, but because you're in a team, yeah. So it is it's considered one of the cooperative games, right? Where, 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 where not everyone will follow the leader. Yeah. So it, it tends to have a in-depth analysis as a team together. Yeah, there is a conversation together. Yeah, you know, so 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 you know, rarely you have one leader that makes all the decision. Yeah. So yeah, so in a way, it is this game is a lot more engaging than I thought when I first played. And 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 when I hosted the game, when I played the game many times, like, okay, I enjoy all the sessions. Yeah, despite winning or losing. Yeah. So that will be my number four pick, code names. Great picks. Nice. <clears throat> totally forgot about code names. <laughs> I'm quite surprised there's no crossover of code names. You know? <laughs> I think code names is the kind of game where if you are playing, if, if a team has a group of friends versus a team of strangers, uh, the group of friends will have natural advantage. In, to have chemistry. In, uh, yes, and no, la, say yes and because no. Because they may have inside jokes or certain words that they associate with things that the strangers it, it, wouldn't have. Inside jokes like, uh, or, or inside information, yeah, this understand, yeah. same as colleagues, you know, they, you know, they have their own uh, phone lingo, yeah. etc. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, on that point, yes, uh, yeah, but. But even playing with strangers, it is still equally enjoyable. I mean, yeah. it, to be honest, I, I would think that it would be more enjoyable if the 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 the, the playing field is fair. Like if 
all strangers or if let's say there are friends like who who oh, yeah, understand yeah. Actually, everybody know each other because otherwise yeah. if you have a group of friends versus a group of strangers right the chance that the friends will trump the strangers is fairly high because of the fact like you mentioned the in- internal lingos to be honest when i last played it right there was one word uh, okay I, I have a friend who is not so good in he proclaimed he's not so good in english yeah. so but then we had certain certain words that we used last time in video games that the moment we say that uh, he associated it was like a word and the word six eh. it's not like word two or what he got all six right nice. <laughs> oh, in one round because wow. associated and he linked to that word and there was kind of a bomb that belonged to the other team but then because of the word being so specific he kind of was able to, to navigate around it just because of the that's the that's the internal hidden okay, knowledge like, that yeah. but, but, but based on my experience uh, your case is actually quite Rare, like, rare, rare yeah. yeah. So, because you do consider the fact that other team, right, also has similar work within a similar team. Yeah. So, for example, let's say if your crew is food, right, okay, and there are you know fruits and vegetables and other dishes, right, even restaurants, right, okay, yeah. So, so it is also quite challenging to go and guess, you know, oh, okay, you know, this so called crew about food could belong to other team as well. Yeah. So, so, um, yes, I, I, I do get a point about you know this uh, insight. This one is like a good game though. Good. Yeah, but in a way, I find it this situation a bit. It's, it's actually quite rare. It is yeah, rare. It's, uh, it, it's yeah. definitely a good game. I, I won't I won't dispute the fact it's a good game. It's just that, mm. like, yeah, just just stating a point there. Okay, mm. so we have been on code names for a while now. Let's move on to Matthew's number four. Okay. Um, my number four is actually called uh Kakalakan Poker, or also known as uh in English Cockroach Poker. So in this game, basically you start off with a, a hand of cards and you have like up to eight different types of uh, insects. And what you're trying to do is you're actually trying to give cards to other people. How you do that is by first taking a card, you pass to somebody else and you declare what that um, insect is, right? Um, so, when that, so the person has one of three things to do. Either catch you for telling the truth, catch you for telling a lie, or he can inspect. Now, if you're the last person who has not seen the card, you cannot inspect the card, right? And you have to therefore guess whether it's truth or bluff. Now, uh, one thing I kind of like about the game is the, firstly, is the bluffing element, right? Like, um, I think the worst possible scenario is like, when you, let's say you have five players, right? And all the other four players, they are all saying like, okay, this is uh, inside A, this inside B, this inside C. Inside D, and then you're the last person, and you don't know who's telling the truth, right? So yeah, so that brings about that tension, right? Uh, the other form of tension that comes about through the game is, let's say for example, oh, speaking of which, I forgot to mention is that, um, if you actually have four of the same uh insects in your, in front of you, right? Then you will lose the game. So let's say for example, you have three spiders. Right? And let's say the last person say, hey, this is a spider, you know, and when it comes to you, you're like, should I be saying this is the truth? Should I be saying this is a lie? Because it might just end the game and I might be the big loser in the game. So yeah, that's my number four, uh, Kakalanka Poker. Right, that's a great one as well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll move on to my fourth pick, my number four. So uh, my number four pick is... Uh, it's an Asian game. I like to always include an Asian game in even in uh, in any in any topic. And uh, the game that I've I've picked, I've actually mentioned it before in the top five games designed by Asian. And that is Hanami Koji. So that's my fourth pick. So I'm gonna repeat. Uh, you've probably heard this if you've watched the video. Then Hanami Koji is a is a game uh, where the setting is uh, you're trying to attract geishas and. Uh, you do that in a format of I pick, you choose uh, kind of concept where the, the gameplay takes place. You you kind of want to take certain actions, but the thing is that you are not actually taking the action because you you decide on what is going to happen, but the other party is the one that kind of affects what you have chosen. So you you, you will probably want to put it in a way that uh, it's, it's, it's difficult for the other party to choose. And at the same time, I mean, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game that uh, as much as uh, or when it comes to dominant strategy, that isn't, I haven't found it. And I like to find dominant strategies in game. And Hanami Koji is the kind of game that anytime anyone wants to play with me, I will sit down or play with you, no problem. Because the gameplay is so quick that you probably play a couple of games before you decide who's the winner, like who's the eventual winner. And uh, 
it's I think it's my only two player pick here. It's my only two player picks here. So uh yeah, my fourth pick, Hanami Koji. Alright, great game. So Steve, your fourth uh, pick. Yeah, uh oh. number four for me is uh also it was also featured in the top five Asian games. <laughs> Which very very surprising that there was another there was someone else that also picked one that was featured in the top five Asian games. Quite a uh, flashback by there. It's a good game, that's why we picked them. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Alright, so my number four is Night Clan by Domina Games. So uh so Night Clan, uh basically if you watch the video before you also know. Uh basically like in Night Clan players are rich merchants trying to hide their daughters and their riches from the troll with the help of this uh witch uh witch doctor looking guy. Hey, sorry, click doctor looking guy that, that's called the Night Watch. Uh, so how you do this is you'll be placing your daughters and riches in various locations and trying to send uh your your own trolls in a sense to other players daughters and riches so that they will lose their daughters and riches <laughs> instead of you and mm-hmm. the players who's able to keep their daughters and riches <laughs> most safe most safely is the winner at the end of the game so a uh, fantastic game even though it's it's played in such a short time it's uh, every game I play is like 20 minutes or lesser uh, even though uh, it's such a short game but there's so much depth and there's so much uh, strategy that can be done can be thought of in the game there's so, so much mind games that players can play on each other it's really a fantastic game and I usually play like three, two, three or four times in a row when I play with my friends so great game uh, Night Clan fantastic game highly recommend it as well my number four right so still no crossover at the end of all our four pick so then we'll go on to number three Jeffrey, we are back to you. Yes. Okay, my number three is a four-player game where each player will have a number of Catrice look-alike plastic tiles and you are to place them on the board. So your objective is to place as many squares of your Catrice shapes into the board as much as possible. Yeah. So, if you want to guess a game, okay, my number three pick is called Blockers. Yes, uh, Blockers by Bernard Tabakian, and uh, I believe there are a lot of publishers. I think Mattel recently had published that game as well. So, uh, basically, you can get that game in, in normal toy stores, any other toy stores as well. Yeah. So, why do I recommend this game as my number three? Right? Because for... I mean, for, for my number three list onwards, right, okay, the games are getting more and more strategic. So this is one of the games where, where, where you, you have to put in a lot of thought, a lot of considerations, you know, what are the best house to, to place within a limited space you're having, as well as the strategy to block other players, to avoid them from placing their house as well. Yeah. So the gameplay is, is actually that simple, but all right, the strategic factor is 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 really to the point whereby you know is is so much you know so much depth in it you know yeah and and every game right okay you 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 need to strategize differently yeah so so that is why I would recommend this game and and my number three blockers. Right, I think when you were mentioning the game or you're mentioning the description, we are all trying to guess what the game is. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> some game in mind. When you, yeah. said, when you said Tetris, <clears throat> first game, I was like, okay, is it Team 3? Because it's a newer game. Then <laughs> we went on four players. I was like, is it Ubongo? Mm-hmm. And it became Jock Blockers. But I mean, all, all of them are uh, uh, Tetris uh, inspired kind of games. Uh, just given yeah, so far, yeah, yeah, which I believe Blockers is a game where you definitely play less than 30 minutes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And it happens that all the games that I was thinking of were all under 30 minutes. So. <laughs> What a coincidence, yeah. So, anyway, okay, uh, still no crossover. Let's move on to Matthew's uh, number three. Hmm. Okay, uh, my number three is a game that I actually want to give a little bit of context to. Right? Uh, if really not for Board Game Arena, I would not have encountered it. Hmm. Um, so, the title of the game is actually called Stir Fry 18. 
uh, yeah, I mean, so by the name itself, it actually states that it has 18 cards and each of the cards, right, um, they have specific functions in the game. Now, generally, uh, Stir Fry 18, everybody plays as chefs and what they are trying to do is they are actually trying to cook dishes. So, uh, how you actually uh, gain ingredients in order to cook dishes which gives you the most points you actually either need to discard pears or you need to discard uh, what I like called proteins right there's actually chicken pork and uh, what's the other one duck if I'm correct okay but anyway um, so in the game how you get ingredients you either need to discard pears or the proteins right but sometimes your hand may not have so you can actually choose to lie about the cards that you discard in the game and of course uh, people can catch you you know if uh, they choose to then of course there's the there's the element of if you catch wrongly you know you receive a penalty if you catch correctly then you know you get some benefit and yeah so um, personally my kind of game uh, just like my number fives and fours and as I talk about my number twos and ones really very um, what's the word for it it has a lot of mind games to it yeah so yeah that's my number three uh stuff right 18. all right so we can tell that matthew's game are all based on one type of team a lot of bluffing a lot of guessing a lot of mind games involved yeah yeah and i think that's also the way that you're gonna you can actually describe your game right better than c majors yeah yeah, yeah definitely it's uh it's a lot of mind games also <laughs> you can tell uh, if you actually eventually get to play his game it's probably a combination of all these great games that he have ever played before. I mean, in terms of the thinking process of the mind games combining into kind of one, <laughs> one game that he comes out with. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, so, mm. still no crossover. Still no crossovers. Even the amount of games that are under 30 minutes, I'm, I'm fairly surprised. And uh, my number three pick is, uh, I think, the oldest game that is in my list. Uh, the oldest game and uh, it's a game uh, about buying houses and selling houses mm. so the game is called For Sale so uh, For Sale is a game where it's played over two rounds uh, you start off with uh, some coins you start off with money and uh, what you have to do within the first round is to use the money to bid for houses and then what happens after that is that you will acquire a set of houses where in the second round, you actually try to sell the houses. And uh, at the end of it, uh, you will actually have a, a, a sum total of the money that you actually managed to sell the houses for and the money that you actually have left over initially in round one where you didn't buy houses. And you combine that and that's your point. So to me, it's a very quick, uh, it's a very quick and fun game uh, where you kind of can understand uh, each other psyche of what they're trying to think of when they actually bid for a certain amount. Some people you can tell within the first two, three rounds they bid away all their coins and then they're just left with all the kind of garbage numbers, houses towards the end of round one. But some people you can tell that they're more cautious and they actually approach game, they approach the game very systematically where they actually reserve towards the end. But then they realize that towards the end the cards that come out of the houses actually the numbers are not that big. Which actually kind of defeats the purpose of, of what of their planning. So in a way, it's, it's not a game that you can really plan for. Uh, you have to think a lot on the on on your feet, and uh, that's what uh, I like about the game. So if I'm not mistaken, the game seems to be what one, uh, one of the few that come out in the last century. I think it's 1997 where the game was published, was first published, and I think since then there have been many iterations. But uh, yeah, I I don't think that. Uh, the, the, the changes that came along along the years uh, have changed much of the original game. So that will be my uh, number three pick for sale. Alright, for sale is great. Right, so now mm. we are with Steve's number three pick. Alright, so my number three pick is probably the most expensive of all the games I have in my list. Uh, it's a nice uh, two player game. Uh, it's the title is is named after a country in Greece. Is it a country? No, probably a city. Sorry, my geography sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sebastian got it. Santorini is the name of the game. Uh, fantastic two-player game. Uh, 
I know I know the board says two to four players, but I I or personally I would never play above two players. But yeah, so in Santorini, you are uh, players are building the city of Santorini by placing by moving their builders around this uh, square grid and placing parts of a building. So in order to win, one of the players has to place their one or any one of their builders on the third level of any building. Once they do that, once they accomplish that rather, then they straight up win the game. Sounds fairly simple, but it's actually a very crunchy uh, and thinky game. Uh, and I, I really, uh, I really, uh, when I first played, I, I was very, very surprised of how deep you could get and of how much I could think about all my moves, all my strategies, while the game is, was so simple and it, just, it was just a one-page rule book, kind of, more or less one-page rule book. So it was super surprising and I really enjoyed it. So uh, that's why I straight, straight away went to buy it after, <laughs> after playing it. So yeah, I think it's a fantastic two-player game. If you ever, you're ever looking for something two-player and looks aesthetically nice, because while you're building, you, you stack everything, all the buildings for looks amazing. Yeah, then think of Centurini. Yeah, highly recommend it as well. My number three, Centurini. Right. So up to now, we have 12 games recommended, no crossover. So it means that there are more so, games that we are all... Although, although for sale uh, was almost my choice, I replaced it with Blockers. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well... Almost, almost there. Oh, okay. Of course. All right. So now we are down to our top two, and uh, our number two pick. Uh, back to Jeffrey. All right. My number two pick is a game where the artwork is amazing to me, but each card is just a picture of a tree. Nothing oh. but a tree. Okay? <laughs> Alright. So, not many people know this game, but this game is called Arboretum. Yeah, mm. I put it correctly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. So, this game is basically a, a set collection game where uh, a set collection game, a towel laying game, a hand management game, all right, where you earn points based on how you create paths according to how you place the type of trees. And the catch is you have to keep the card of the tree, tree type, okay? Where you want to earn the points, you have to, you have to keep the high scoring card. Yeah, because if other players want to earn the points based on the type of tree, right? They have to reveal the leftover card from the hand. And this is where they decide who deserves to earn the scoring for the type of tree, yeah, uh, it's a bit hard to explain, uh, you know, without the game. But um, but you can read the rule book, yeah. So in a way, um, the rules are a, a little difficult to explain right now, yeah. But the reason why I recommended this game, right, because it is one of it's one of game where you can play less than half an hour, where it includes hand management, pattern building, set collection, how placement. You know, with just a number of cards, I find it. I I, I find the gameplay, the um, the game design, you know, very interesting. Yeah, even for a short game. Yeah, and 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 it is strategically. You know, I mean, it is a very good strategic game. Okay, you strategically make a lot of decisions. Okay, sometimes you need to sacrifice some of your, some of your, you know, um, some of your plans. You know, you have to make quick decisions. You know, based on what's the situation going on and probably how how you guess, I mean, how you analyze what other players are trying to, you know, um, achieve. Yeah, so, so, so that's my number two. Uh, did I mention the game designer just now? Forgot, right? Okay, so my number two game is uh, Arboretum by Dan Kessler. Uh, um, there are multiple publishers, so, um, yeah, so probably I remember Z-Man Games published it once, yeah, but, but there are many others. Yep, so this is my number two. Okay. Okay. And game on trees. You rank it in number two. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not intended. But anyway, so let's move on to Matthew's number two pick. Okay. Uh my number two. Uh the title is called Cool. Uh that one is quite uh familiar to most. 
Uh, in fact, for myself, it was so good that I actually bought about, I think, 11 or 12 copies to give to my friends. <laughs> yeah. So in, in Cool, basically, you have like two characters in which they could be any of the five different types. So you have like the Duke that usually amasses a lot of money so that you can uh, um, cool other people, right? Uh, or cool other characters. You have the thief that actually steals money. You have the you have the assassin who is allowed to assassinate uh, other characters at a cheaper cost. Um, there is also the contessa who is able to prevent assassination. So that's like the counter to assassin. And I cannot remember who's the last one, but basically what he does is that he can actually switch roles. Um, no, he can switch character cards with the deck. So yeah, when you have the character, you can basically be anybody. And um, in this, sorry? <laughs> and the captain. <laughs> oh no, no, the captain is the stealing. Yeah, ambassador. Oh yeah, ambassador, that's the one. So um, because in the game, right, um, in my own opinion, I also feel it's kind of like a little bit of a political game because when you have like the maximum six players that are playing together, right, they'll be like, okay, okay who should we go after first? Who should we go after next? So that is kind of uh, sweet in its own sense. But if you're like playing two players, then it's like head on, you know. So, and basically, the one of your best skills win. You can't really use politics in a two player game. So, again, it's like what I just now mentioned is like one of those kind of games that is very mind gamey, you know. And yeah, number two, cool. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not intended as well. So, next, we'll move on to my number two pick. And uh, my number two pick uh, is a cooperative game. And uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, so far based on all the games we have mentioned, it's the only game that have won a skill did job. And the name of the game is Hanabi. <laughs> yeah, why is, yeah. But anyway, uh the, the reason why I picked Hanabi is because uh it's a very easy to understand game. Uh and uh in a in a the the, the problem with most co-op games is you always have someone who leads everyone to victory in a way because of the, the, the nature of uh, knowledge kind of being able to be shared and uh, that's why someone will actually take the lead and analyze and try to win the game. But in Hanabi, the, the, whole co- the whole game revolves around not knowing what cards you have. So that actually forces you to uh, get information or you give information or you kind of sacrifice certain cards uh, in, in, in your hand and uh, you actually uh, then gain uh, a scroll uh, or you can flip over the scroll so that people will, the next player can actually have an opportunity to provide information. So the, the whole game is revolving around uh, fireworks where you are trying to uh, put off a, a, a good fireworks show and there are five different colors of uh, fine numbered cards and it's supposed to be played in a certain order from one to five. So uh, in a way, uh, there are certain cards that have, there are, there are more copies of a card and for like number five card, there's only one of each copy. So in a way, when you choose to actually sacrifice cards, you may actually sacrifice the uh, a card that's number five and you don't get to play it anymore. So it affects the overall score. Yeah, yeah, it's ranked based on scoring, which means that uh, if uh, the team actually plays a perfect game, you get a score of 25 because you actually managed to release uh, all five uh, fireworks, reaching five points each. So that's 25 points. Yeah. But uh, the, the one thing I actually like on top of that is the fact that they actually, uh, in one of the copies that I actually have from uh, a backer's bill, where they actually provide kind of like the six wild card colored uh, firework, where in terms of information being given, for example, you, because in, in the game, you can only give information based on, for example, if let's say you see a, a, a hand of five cards, you can only say a number or how many num which card is this certain number or this card is what color. But because of the, the presence of the wild card now, even if let's say you want to say, okay, these cards are blue, you have to include the wild card within that, 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 that listing. So that makes, that, that adds a complexity for a game that's really good. There's another added layer if you want to have a kind of a challenge mode, yeah, which to be honest, I think when I play with my friends, we always die like, I don't know, under 10 points when we add in the wild card. So yeah, that, that shows how difficult the game is. But uh, I mean, for all that I just mentioned, the fact that they won an award and it's not a small award tells it all. It's from a very renowned uh, a 
uh, designer Anton Bowser. So, yeah. And I just actually re just realized that the game actually was released a lot earlier as a part of uh, as a as a game of two part series. Uh, the game name is, is actually called Hanabi and Ikebana, hmm. where surprisingly there was a co there was a competitive mode uh, that you can play using the cards. But uh, I, I I just found that out like like when I was doing research for for this top five series. So if you actually have time, check it out how to play it competitively. I'm not sure if you are given the relevant components in Hanabi to play that, but yeah, you can check it out if you want to. I will add in the link below. So anyway, that's my number two pick. Hanabi, no problem. Hanabi, fantastic game as well. Okay, so my number two uh, is another German game. It's by the same publisher from my number five. And uh, it's a very chaotic game, I would say. <laughs> so uh, the title of the game is called The Nasty Seven. Or in German, uh, Die Feischen 7. Yeah. I don't know what the 7 for. It's not 7 in German. <laughs> but, okay, so in this game, right, uh, there are a bunch of cards. Then each player will be given their own deck of cards, so to speak. And on each, on each card, there will be a certain number of Mafia guys. And they might be doing some kind of actions. So during your turn, what you'll be doing is you'll be taking a top card of your deck playing it to the center, adding it to the whatever uh, playing pile there is. And then you'll be saying something based on what the card you just played is. So some examples would be like, uh, the most common one is just a single mafia mafioso standing there doing nothing. And you have to add one to the current number, the current count, and just say the current number. So if it was the first card in the entire round, it'll be just one. If it was the second card, it'll be just two. So it's like one, two something like that and then there's also there's also things like uh, there's this mafioso single mafioso holding a phone to his to his ear and talking to the phone then if that was the case instead of saying the number uh, although you still add one to the count you must instead clear your throat like mm, yeah so if, if it was played like a uh, single mafioso and a mafioso on phone would be like one then mm, then the next player continues yeah so uh, yeah so there's also a few other quite funny ones like uh, I guess I guess the most funny one would be the double mafioso with phones, both holding phones, and you have to say mm, mm. Uh, and uh, for double mafiosos, you have to skip the next player's turn. And every time a mafioso is uh, shown, you have to add one to the count. And one twist of the game is that once the count reaches seven, you have to count downwards. So it'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then six, five, four, three, two, one. So that, that was a very uh, interesting mechanic in the game that it threw a lot of people off. <laughs> and whenever I played that, that was, <laughs> that was something that always made people uh, laugh uh, and when people screw up. So what happened when you screw up is that you have to take the entire pile and then you have to add it to your deck. Uh, and the first player who finishes playing all the, finishes playing all the cards in their deck wins. Uh. Uh, so uh, it's a, I feel it's a very um how should i say it's a game i didn't know that i would like so much because i don't usually enjoy all these uh, chaotic games i prefer those uh, very thinky games but uh when i when i played it when i show it to my friends when i bring it out to meetups to play with other people i uh, really enjoyed it and everyone who played it also really enjoyed it and we couldn't stop playing so <laughs> uh, even though i think by now i've played it over a hundred times already and I, I think I was still thinking of taking it out and playing it. So it's a great game. Uh, yeah, so the Nasty 7, uh, you can play up to five players, I think. And yeah, definitely under 30 minutes, maybe under 10 minutes or so. Uh, Nasty 7 by Three Rabbits in the Sunset. Great game. Do check it out. Okay, so still no crossover. But what <laughs> I found out is that uh, the Nasty 7 is actually made by the same, it's actually designed by the same designer as. Uh, Kekka Laken Poker. Poker Poker. Oh. Same designer. Okay. So we have crossover in terms of designers, but not in terms of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now we move on to the long awaited number one. Number one, yeah. yes. Over to you.
Okay, so my number one is one of my favorite games of all time. One of them. Um, it's also mentioned in other of your videos. So it is uh, about each player takes a towel and during the next turn, when is your turn to take the next towel depending on which towel you take. Yeah. All right, yeah, so not sure they explain it clearly, but uh, okay, why not just say it? My number one is King Domino, yeah, uh -huh. which is a bit controversial because, um, um, why okay, because uh, most of the time when I play this game, right, okay, it is ranging, uh, it is either okay, less than 30 minutes, more than 30 minutes, yeah, and and most of the time, I think it's really 50 50. Yeah, a lot of times I played it more than 30 minutes, a lot of times I play it, you know, less than 30 minutes. Yeah, so, um, so the reason why I add this game inside this list, right, is I am deducting the time span to think about which tile you're taking. Yeah, so let's say if you're playing with players, right, who take too long to decide which tile to pick, right, okay, definitely will be above 30 minutes. But if uh, you're playing with players, right, okay, who who you know have an average time, even think it, I mean, make a decision within an average time. Right? Yes, you can play less than 30 minutes. Yeah, so just want to make it clear first. All right, so okay, if uh, if if uh, if any of you viewers uh, have no idea what King Domino is about, right, it is uh, a, it is basically a city building game where you know where where each turn you take a tile and you start doing a tile placement, right? You can you will start earning points based on how you place a terrain and how do you score for each terrain of course there are some extra bonus depending on how you create the five times five with uh, terrain as well so uh, the players with the most points wins okay yeah so uh, of course if you play together the expansion um, things will get a lot more interesting and could possibly expand extend more than 30 minutes yeah so i'm i'm only introducing the base game for this game for now Okay, for games under 30 minutes, just get the base game. Yeah, try the base game. I'm sure uh, many of many of uh, board gamers will enjoy this game. Yeah, so that's my number one, King Domino by Bruno Catella and publisher Blue Orange. Yeah. All right, another spell to draw winner. <laughs> yeah, Steve is giving me the eye. <laughs> what? Yeah, we have. No, I'll never win the war. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Actually, I think your favorite games don't really have to be award winning. Yeah, it doesn't have to be award winning. It's just that yeah. possibly when it wins an award, it just means that okay, there's a panel of judges that think it's a good game. That's that's all. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Games that some people that are game some people that. So to each his own. Yeah, to each his own. Yeah, this is nothing. So without further ado, Matthew, your number one. My number one. Uh. So, uh, my number one, uh, the title of the game is called Skull. I've just also searched online. Sometimes they call it Skull of Roses, right? So, in the game, you just have like four cards. So, either, I mean, your three cards will be like roses and then you have a skull. So, everybody will take turns to start placing any of the tiles that they want, whether it be a rose or a skull. And when someone decides to say, okay, Let's uh, start bidding, you know. Then, hands off in terms of placing the, the the cards, and they start to bid, you know. How many cards can they receive without getting a skull? And the winner of the bid then opens up the, the tiles one by one. Of course, if he manages to open the exact number, so let's say, for example, he called for three roses, you know, without opening a skull, and he manages to open three, then he will, he will win a point, right? Uh, in the game, you once you have two points, you win the whole entire game, right? Mm. Um, but here's the catch. when Let's say, for example, you're calling for three roses, uh, you always have to take out your own. So if you're the kind that likes to set people up by placing skulls first, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And alternatively, you know, you might play it safe, you know, you might place off roses, but your opponents might be setting up the skull just for you. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't, I mean, you don't exactly bluff to other people, but uh, you, it's, it's kind of like, you do it because it's kind of like, um, 
optimal, even though the game doesn't outrightly ask you to bluff. Yeah. So yeah, that's my number one game, uh, Skull or yeah. Skull and Bones. Yeah. Hey, sorry, uh, Skull and Roses. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So my number one pick, my number one pick is actually my uh one of the newer games. Uh, uh when For Sale was uh, the oldest game. My number one piece is the newest that I have uh, amongst my wife. And uh, it's a game about vegetables. And the name of the game, Point Salad. So to me, Point Salad, uh, when I first uh, encountered this game, uh, when, it, when you look at the card itself, I mean, to be honest, I have a video on the unboxing and I was scrutinizing on the card quality that it came with. But to be honest, the gameplay itself is awesome. It is a uh, kind of like a... I won't call it engine building, but it's, it's a set collecting game. But the thing is that you were actually, the, the things that you collect, because each turn you either collect a card that, that determines uh, which vegetable give you what point or give you what negative point, or you can choose to collect two vegetables. Two, uh, the vegetables are your tomato, onion, uh, cabbage, lettuce, so on and so forth. I, I can't remember, carrots, something else. Yeah, so th there are six of them. And uh, you just keep taking turns, uh, uh, either drafting the point card or the vegetable or the salad card, so to, so to speak. So with that, uh, you, you just try to, at the end of the game, uh, maximize or get the most point. So it is a kind of game where, uh, why I would kind of call it a bit like an engine builder, because when you start collecting point cards, you're building an engine and you're trying to get certain vegetables that fits your engine to score the points. Yeah, but it's kind of like the more uh, elementary level of engine builder in, in a certain way but in no way it actually takes away from the game it's uh, awesome I played it once and then immediately I want to play again and uh, it's the kind of game where uh, Jeffrey's uh, accessory the calculator hmm. is important because you will literally need to use the calculator to help you calculate the points because to, to be honest if you, especially if you play a two player game because of the the tick and tap and the, the amount of cards you have, you literally need that to count the points because there's so many variations in terms of the point cards that you receive that scores you different count points. So all in all, uh, my number one pick, they have three designers, so I'm not going to attempt listing all three of them. But yeah, my number one pick, point salad. Fantastic game. Alright, so now we are on our last game and there's still no crossover, which means that for viewers out there, you're going to get 20 games, 20 solid games that are under 30 minutes that we all, that the four of us recommend. So Steve, mm. your number one pick. Uh, sorry to disappoint, but there will only be 19. <sighs> there is only one crossover and it is also Point Salad, <laughs> my number one game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so I think uh, Sebastian covered most of it, uh, talking about the game. Fantastic open drafting. I think it's a great uh, alternative to Sushi Go for players who play Sushi Go. It actually replaced Sushi Go for me when I found out a point setter. I was like, what? Sushi Go? Throw away. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, but point setter is really fantastic in that uh, it has some, it has a slight amount of depth and it has very simple gameplay and you can explain it in under, like, under one minute. It's very easy for players to pick up and you can just keep playing it. You just keep playing like several maybe 10, 10 games of it and you're still not tired of it for some reason because there's so much replayability in the different point cards and what vegetables turn up at what time and uh, the art is also really great and uh, it was actually uh, points that was actually my one of my the number one game for 2019 for me yeah, very surprising because mm. it's a it's sort of a filler game for me and I mostly play strategy games so uh, yeah uh, I guess I won't talk too much about it but points out really fantastic game number one so finally we have one person and Steve is <laughs> there to burst my bubble on us recommending <laughs> any game to be really really honest right, I replaced my original number one pick in the very last minute with points out because in a way uh, it kind of feel like it's, it's uh, uh, similar in terms of the, the gameplay at least for me my original number one pick, I'm going to still fill you guys with 20 games. My original number one pick was Splendor. Where oh. Steve mentioned that he can explain point seller in one minute. I can also explain Splendor in one minute. <laughs> it's a game where you pick, to you pick your tokens 
and then you use uh, you pick your gems and then you use your gems to buy cards and then you use your cards eventually to qualify to win the nobles and then when you reach 15 points you win 15 under 10 under one minute definitely you can explain the game and people will just want to start going and it's, it's also a game that you will cut will kind of keep going uh, as a drive to me why i felt that they were similar in nature is because the the, the way i look at it it being an engine builder replaces uh i mean points that replaces uh blender for me but uh i mean points that on on its own I mean, it doesn't have expansion yet. I don't know whether they are planning for it, but knowing AEG, they like expansions. So maybe there will be a point salad with a new form of vegetable coming soon. Uh, but Splendor, I mean, if you add in the uh, expansion, CG of Splendor, yeah, there will be more things that you look at for in the game. So uh, yeah, it was a toss up between point salad and Splendor for me for number one game because I enjoy both games that much. But I didn't want to put Splendor as a number two game because in a way, I don't know when, when we when we talk about games that replaces each other. Yeah, it, it just felt a, a newer, more exciting, more sexy game that came out to replace it. Even though I seriously okay, if you have point salad, definitely buy sleeves with it. Don't play point salad on its own. The card quality definitely is horrendous. <laughs> yeah, I bended so many cards while sleeving it. I mean, that's the you you kind of defeat the purpose of sleeving when the cards while putting into the sleeve gets bent. That's just how flimsy the cards were. I mean, if it came in poker quality cards, 310 gram or 310 GSM, you don't have to sleep it. But it came in, I don't know, it's, it's pretty flimsy and I, I wasn't very pleased with quality, but gameplay, excellent. Yeah, so, all right. Yeah. So, okay, actually, actually, to be honest, right, okay, I never played points at before, but since the probably recommend it, right, yeah, I'm, I'm actually taking a look at it right now. Yeah, it looks interesting. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and okay, like, yeah, I think the, the interface of the cards are actually quite, I mean, you can see it's quite clean, you know, I mean, yeah, the the, the, the details-wise, yeah, it, it looks like you can understand the cards easily, yeah, so, yeah, interesting. So it seems that we are, we are converting Jeffrey, maybe <laughs> soon, top five will have a new game entry, I don't know. I mean, the very fact that it, it came in uh, first in two of our picks, and we obviously never discussed this before. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great game. Maybe not for Matthew, because Matthew has a specific genre of games that he likes. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mind gamey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I was actually doing a check on uh, board game geeks. To be honest, the funny thing is, uh, when you actually search for uh, any one of Matthew's picks, and then there will be a column below that they say fans also love this. You can almost find all the games inside that listing. That's how <laughs> the rising is. <laughs> Everything they mentioned, ooh, oh, all the games are there. And some of our games are also there. So probably uh, uh, they actually classify it maybe by the, the time that it takes to play. Yeah. So yeah, we hope that we uh, together, the four of us provided you guys some option in terms of uh, shorter games that I mean, in, in any way, doesn't really uh, take away the fun or the joy of playing tabletop games uh, as a whole. Uh, mm-hmm. To be honest, the, the, the whole team was inspired because I, I was actually having a conversation with a colleague and he was telling me, wow, board games are boring, it's long. It triggered me, I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> no, it's not long. Uh, so that's why I was inspired to introduce games that are actually under 30 minutes and you can have a lot of fun playing them. So the kind, kind of, of uh, kind is surprised that the mind didn't come up. It's like, not really a game, lah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you put it that way, <laughs> uh, I, I I mean the mind. Yeah, I some of my friends really like the mind. Uh, in terms of the tension that it, it came about in the game, and I mean it could have easily replaced Hanabi if we call it a cooperative That's game true. where that you won't have one person dictating because you can't. It's just mm. how the game is. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like everything what Hanabi is not because you have perfect knowledge of your own things. That's all. And then you're trying to predict when. <laughs> so, the mind yeah. it came close. I think it came close. It was probably if I lengthen this to top 10, maybe the mind would qualify in one of the Why didn't you pick the mind then? Because uh, I never played before, actually. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we uh. need the. Uh... To me, the mind is not in my list right, because it's not a game where it encourages a lot of interaction. It is basically a very quiet game, so 
to even recommend it as one of the top. You have the number. <laughs> yeah. Is your yeah. number lower than mine? <laughs> no. Hey, play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So actually, I do have some other considerations as well. So, uh, I mean, I do consider placing this game called In Front of Elevators. This Japanese game, In Front of Elevators, I do consider that also. But the thing is, that game, most of the time I play that game, right? Okay, it is it is either just nice thirty minutes or turn. Yeah. So you, pro- I mean, for experienced players, they can be less than thirty minutes. But but for new players, definitely more than that. Yeah. Uh, I also do consider. Uh, let's make a bus group. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, other than that, yeah, I think Sashi I think getting a shout out here almost made it. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> about that, the there were no raw and rights in our list also, which is quite interesting, I guess. <laughs> Do you're not consider raw and right games as well? Let's build a bar shoot was the closest to a raw and right. It needs a flip and raw. Yeah, so we yeah. Are- Actually, I thought some of you might mention Spy 4. Spy 4? Spy 4, Spy 4. Mm. Yeah, possibly Spy 4. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm also guessing, okay, I'm also guessing like, like, um, like, like there like, might be a crossover for, for, okay, okay, to be honest, I, 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 I kind of predict some of you might, might, might mention blockers also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm also guessing some of you might have Monopoly deal. <laughs> so, wrong, yeah, crowd, yeah. wrong crowd, <laughs> wrong crowd, wrong crowd. Wrong <laughs> yeah. Monopoly deal under thirty minutes. Are you sure? <laughs> I think no, 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 Monopoly oh. deal. I played two hours Monopoly deal before four players. Why? How is it even possible? Two hours. <laughs> hijacking each other so nobody get three copy sets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. People can target each other in a certain sense. Mm, yeah. Mm. Anyway, my, my other co-op game was Grizzle. Oh, okay. oh Grizzle. Yeah. Which I, I really enjoy. It's a war team. The team kind of fits. Uh, talking about the cards being morale. You flip, you try to get out of the war, be happy. And then I, 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 I really like the fact that one of the uh, one of the handicap cards, or, or I can't remember what's the term they use on it. Uh, there was one good card among them called Merry Christmas, which sounds very mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's just how the setting is. It's a uh, French fighting the, the World War One in that era, so you know, it's, it's, it's a war game kind of thing. Mm. Uh, that would have made it, but and and it's, it it also kind of fits in the, the 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 topic of you don't really get one person leading everyone because of the fact that everybody has their own hand and mm. in terms of support token, kind of you kind of can influence, but you can't really uh really, I mean like pandemic where one person is playing the game. If you know what I mean. You know everybody's role, and you kind of let one person, one person literally can take over and play the game as a as a solo gamer, even though there are other players out there. So to me, that kind of co op game kind of takes it takes a lot of the fun away from other players, especially those players that are newer and trying to learn the game or trying to enjoy the game. Like German is taken away. That's like you're playing FIFA on the PS4, and the, the, you decide to let the AI take over. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Yeah, they they kind of they kind of concept. So mm, understand. For me, point seller was an easy number one. When when you when you told me about this, this I was like, number one point seller. Then I think of the four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you enjoy watching videos like this, please uh, do comment below. Let us know what are some of the other top five uh, series you want us to do. Uh, we actually have quite a lot in mind, but uh, we like to hear from you, and uh, we definitely can. Customize to whatever you, you feel you want us to watch. We will we can actually film it and uh, uh, for more videos you can find that over here. Uh, do remember to click below to subscribe to Amateur Board Gamer for more videos uh, like this and uh, do click on the notification bell so you get our videos as soon as they come out live on YouTube. And with that, uh, we'll see you again. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.